Hey everyone, I'm Brett Lundquist with The Tuning School. In today's Tech Tuesday, we're gonna learn about how to review a data log before going to the track. So you're about to go to the track. You're probably gonna go out and make sure that your vehicle is ready to perform at its best. You're gonna check things like its tire wear, tire pressure, engine oil, coolant, all the fluids, make sure it's ready to go. Well, did you know you can also use a data log to make sure that the vehicle is ready to go as well? You can check simple things like the coolant temperature, trans temperature, oil, short-term fuel trims, check for manifold leaks, make sure it's making the boost it's ready to make, and also make sure it's not knocking. We're gonna go ahead and look at some data logs that we've taken to kind of be ready to go to the track and just get a little bit of an inside glimpse before we make the trip out there. So I've got a data log here of my truck, and one of the first things that I'm gonna look at is gonna be the engine coolant temp. Now for my truck, at idle on a normal day, it's gonna be somewhere between 170, 180, maybe 185 degrees. Totally cool with that. So if you're looking at this data log with me, you're gonna see that this thing's sitting at about 178, and it's just been sitting here idling for a few minutes. That's perfect. This truck's ready to go as far as the coolant temperature. It's not indicating any kind of issues like my thermostat, low coolant levels, cooling fan not working. Right now, it looks like it's ready to go. Now, you might have a vehicle that actually idles at a different temperature, so you're gonna need to know your vehicle a little bit more. Um, most vehicles are probably somewhere between 190 and 210. This truck just happens to have a lower thermostat, so I know that 178 is really spot on for where it's supposed to be. That said, if the coolant temp is really high, then you probably have an issue. You wanna check your coolant level, you wanna make sure your fans are operating, you might have a sticking thermostat, it might be a reason not to go to the track that day. So it's a good quick little check that might save you a whole lot of headache when you get there. The next thing I'm gonna look at real quick is my battery voltage. It's commonly overlooked because we just assume it's always you know, pretty strong because the vehicle starts. However, the battery voltage is really an indicator of your charging system, which is run by your alternator. And our alternator is going to not only recharge the battery, but it's also gonna help drive a lot of critical components such as our fuel injectors, uh, spark from our ignition coil, our computer itself, the fuel pump, and a myriad of other things. So we wanna make sure that it's sitting at a pretty decent level so that we know that we're gonna get the power and the voltage to all those devices when we need it. In this case, it's sitting here idling at about 14.2 volts, more than enough, this is a healthy system, I know it's working right. But you might have some vehicles that are in the mid 12s, 13s, that's probably okay as well. When you start seeing things that dip down into the 11s and 10s, you probably have a charging system, maybe a bad ground, maybe an alternator that's starting to get weak, or even just a battery or other things that are taking too much uh, voltage from the system. And you might wanna check that out because that could be a problem later down, down the road. The next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and look at is my manifold vacuum. The reason I'm gonna look at this is because whether it's a naturally aspirated or a boosted vehicle like the one I have here on, on the screen, um, this can tell you at idle if you have any kind of vacuum leaks. If this manifold vacuum is not so strong, um, and it's gonna vary by vehicle, so you're gonna kinda have to know your vehicle, but if it's not so strong, you might be saying, hey, why am I not sitting at 15 inches of mercury like I normally am? Maybe I'm down to 10 or eight. That could indicate that there's a leak, some reason some air is escaping somewhere, and you might have an issue that you want to go ahead and address before you take off for the track. I'm gonna move on down to one of the most critical components that we can take a look at, and we should probably be looking at these every so often anyways, and this is gonna be our short-term fuel trims and our long-term fuel trims. The fuel trims are pretty much responsible for telling the computer how close it is to getting the correct amount of fuel, whether that be at idle, part throttle, or wide open throttle. And when we look at these things, especially on a math-based vehicle, we can pretty much instantly tell, is it tuned correctly, or is, is there possibly another issue? Maybe you have a 100% stock vehicle and you're just getting in to tuning and you look at your short-term fuel trims and you realize they say 20 percent well 20 percent would be a pretty bad thing on a stock vehicle because they really should be plus or minus about five percent so you could say well why is that happening this this vehicle stock it's not tuned there's no parts on it what is going on it could be as simple as an air leak something that air is getting past the sensor and not being accounted for it could be an exhaust leak it could be an o2 sensor that's bad um, and a few other little things that that could really be a pain in the butt such as like a bad injector that's flowing too much or not flowing enough. So short-term fuel trims are gonna be one of the first things that you wanna look at and the long-term fuel trims as well. You can see on this truck that right here, it's sitting at about 3% and that's perfect. This truck is pretty much OEM. There's not a whole lot going on for it. So, you know, sitting plus or minus 5%, 
this thing's ready to go. I can tell that there's really shouldn't be any leaks. The O2 sensors are working and everything's working as it should. One of the last things that we're gonna look at, and this is gonna be pretty much something you can only do at wide open throttle. But one of the things that I'm gonna look at on this vehicle because it is boosted, is I'm gonna go ahead and make a little test out on the street and make sure that it's making the boost I want to. Of course, if it were to make more boost than I want to, that could be a bad thing, could indicate some issues with the tune or even something mechanical, or maybe it's not making enough boost. Maybe you're set like this truck to make around 16, 17 pounds of boost, and all of a sudden today it's only making 12. You probably have a boost leak or something else going on. So this could be a nice, easy way to say, hey, what's going on with my vehicle before you make the trip all the way to the track. And the last thing that we're gonna look at is our knock. Knock is something that you always wanna keep an eye on, especially with a performance vehicle. We don't want knock to go and destroy our engine for us, so we wanna make sure that we kind of take a look at this every so often. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the knock and see if there's anything going on here. And in this pull, the knock sensor is actually adding timing, which is great. But if it was pulling timing, it could indicate things like not enough fueling at wide open throttle, too much boost, too much spark advance, poor quality gas, and a few other things. So taking a look at that knock and seeing if it's in range or if it's extreme uh, might help you understand, you know, hey, I need to take action and figure out what's going on here before I go beat on it at a track. You might be going to a quarter mile, a road course, a drift event, or just you know, out having some fun. But taking a look at all these things in a data log can really help make sure that your vehicle is performing correctly before you go out there and beat on it. Thanks for watching. For more tuning knowledge, follow us on social media, and as always, stay tuned. That have a twang and everything. It was a big mouthful. Three syllables. Oh gosh. <laughs> You've killed it for me. You've ruined me. You know how hard you gotta think about one word while you have 20 other words you wanna say? Roll it. Cheese. <laughs>